All right, let's work on our audit. We're auditing the uh, Perry Ford, Perry Ford of Santa Barbara on Hitchcock Way or Lane. Don't worry, it's just down the block from the YMCA. Well, you know, I've had a lot of stories with them during the COVID times. Let's see. Yeah, let's not talk about it. Let's talk about this car. So it's a Ford 28 VST, 28 2018. It's got a kind of like a hybrid motor. No, it doesn't. It just has this gas motor that used to do really good gas mileage. But right, it broke down in the middle of a of a travels I was doing. I really counted on it. And it broke down somewhere kind of in the desert. And... Uh, I had to walk 60 miles. I made it to La Conchita. Uh, the, the people couldn't find me, right? The Allstate didn't find me because the guy was saying, are you in a safe area? And I had to tell him, no, there's these tweakers. They want a blow job. They're lighting a, an American flag on fire. The guy said, you must hang up now. If you say that to me, sir, you'll have to hang up and dial 911. I have to tell you that. And I had to say, no, no, no. You know, I have a special feature on this 2000. 18 uh, that's what the ford perry ford company in santa barbara they sold me on that thing they they even took my mama's hand at one point and stuck it on the hood and i had told her the day before please don't do that but she had already told me the day before they'd been doing it all week to her in COVID times so i call my sister and i go do you know in COVID times here's another thing you didn't want to hear from another story she didn't want to hear it and i'm like no it's your own chase bank they just told me that you're going to give me all your money yeah when you die this teller was so surprised and went oh my god nobody in my family would do that and i was saying you know she's gonna tell me that i put her life in shambles if i mention this online right now or even write it in a letter to her she's gonna tell me that something like throw some guilt that it was my fault that i did finally like take down this you know chase and 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 did these recordings where i was crying about one thing because they wouldn't cash this check and they had a reasoning even though the guy knew that i had played at his quinceanera so he knew i didn't fake the check he knew i was expecting the check he knew i needed to get on my meds my sister doesn't want to hear this i just told them can you please just stay away from the shell stations the ones in santa barbara because this guy jeremy he's bullying me it's like going back i think i remember him from from La Colina Junior High School and he already, you know, messed around with this Yanni who I went to junior high school with, this La Colina, that I found out that the Santa Barbara County doesn't have any more of my paperwork, right? Anything computerized back before 99. You can forget it, people. For people like me, Generation X, if you know what that is, we're the lost generation... With the X generation, uh, Less Than Zero was a book um, written by... Is that Brett Elias? I think it's a book that the guy wrote another book called American Psycho. And my band, Bella Lugosi, we did our first um, copyright infringing... No, our first... We said you have to be 21 and older to listen to this pornographic song all i was doing was reading to some very nice funk that we were doing downstairs in my house yeah in that condo where they tore up the floors upstairs right and all this ptsd um happened and my sister won the game she goes oh you got ptsd but then she didn't want me to fight these people and she sent me to uh, my brother-in-law who who was a treasurer on the board. She didn't want to help me with that. It's all, I finally said, can you please just send this letter, which is an audio recording, which is what you're listening to now, people. They say it's yelling. My family has said this is yelling. Yeah, they can't listen to it. I think, I don't know. I feel like I'm doing a scene right now since it's been two years for sure. I mean, they just haven't seen me COVID, so they don't know what I was doing because I didn't contact anyone. But six years ago is when this was all building up, right? And they haven't, they don't know anything from six years ago, which is a very big story. And now they're getting mad because while I'm trying to tell this story, how the PTSD comes up, 
it brings me back to the 1970s. That's what PTSD is. Joe Kaiser was asking me, people have told me that I have it. Yeah, it's a thing, people. We all have it, probably. If something horrific happened to you, like, let's say, the Holocaust, and you got through it, but there's a certain sound, like... Like there was a movie about this where there's a guy, uh, he, he, he plays the same song. He plays, oh my God, what is it? He plays um, Death and the Maiden by Schubert. And it just starts out. Na, 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 na. It is so dramatic. It's an entire quartet playing at full v- volume. They're just punk rocking it. And I love this. There was a group called the Bush quartet believe it or not but with like an e at the end it was is spelled differently but they were actually jews you can tell by the photos you can tell that's how they got through the war and i can tell the way they're playing they're playing for their lives and that's the way it should be played if these old analog recordings we must bring it back the way it was supposed to be heard but instead everyone went ah the quality is bad of this group We'll just put them on this label. We're not going to make any money off of them. They're already dead. We're not going to talk much about them. And then nobody knows now about this amazing group. But if it was the... When I was going to school and I would try to play another student the music that I liked, and they'd be listening to Yo-Yo Ma and all that. And I'd say, listen to this, cellist. Listen how he plays. He's like the brother to this... The violinist is his, his brother. I totally realize the violinist is really good. It's called the Adolf Bush quartet now they changed their name right it was probably this uh, i don't want to give out their names but it might have been savinsky something right they were jewish they changed their names to bush to sound german are you hearing it and then they would play for the nazis and the ss guards to well they the way they looked the guards knew that they were jewish and they let it fly do you understand they messed with the paperwork we could do it here Right now, if the people want to help me in the Santa Barbara County, since I've been here since 1969 and I experienced the oil spills and the leaks and and the seals dying, and I've also seen just 10 years ago fracking by the same company, Shell, so nobody's learning. And I have to sit and watch it and listen to my students say how they're leaving town. And I said, I know, I tried to explain that movie, American Interdeet. My sister doesn't even want to hear it, but she's a vegan. She apologized later for being a vegan. I was like, no, you're not understanding it. Let me explain this movie to you. You'll leave town, we'll all go somewhere else. Just like I have to clean this apartment when they have put the floors back. It works like that in a war. You bombed my art. You destroyed me. You made me have this PTSD that's making my family not even listen to the meetings, recordings of the anger management, of all the addiction, of eating disorders. Like, I I got everything. I've been through it all. I'm just trying to help people out. And the only way I can help them is if they don't destroy my channel. And I lost, I don't know, like 20 subscribers after just doing a couple days of this thing of just talking to my sister every day that's the channel now trying to talk to another bipolar to be like all right help me just listen to the recording write down what are the what the triggers are point it out i'll either edit it out but i'll probably just delete the whole thing it's no big deal but i i want to learn what those triggers are that you don't want me triggering so that I don't do it again. But like to anybody, to any bipolar for sure. And I can help other bipolars because I'm sure since I am one, they'll go, hey, I'm like you. I'm environmentally bipolar. I'm not like your sister who is genetically bipolar. And those were the words that they don't want to hear. Well, Lassie, I don't know. Lassie, we haven't spoken for years. So before I could take that conversation when Nina called me and made it so my whole week is ruined, I lose subscribers. She doesn't know that I I gain a subscriber a day. It's a lot of work. I have to do one of these audios a day. She can't do the audio. She can't make the audio, but she can't listen to the audio. She can't do the thing. And she says to me all this stuff, though. It seems critical. She's saying, you don't understand. You're not hearing me. And it's happening right there in real time. I go in the text, I say, all right, please just answer that last question. Don't be like mama. 
where you guys don't answer the question, you're going to turn this into a terroristic affront. And I'm like, you're going to make it feel like I need to compromise. I have to negotiate here. And that's what she writes. It's been like my channel. People just do what I say. Like, but man, the upper case going, what? I'm not going to do. You can't do that to people. Ask them like you're a terrorist making us have to listen to something we don't want to. We ain't gonna. Right. Just fighting like my mama. She she will. I will say, just answer my question. Why won't you answer my questions? Just say that. I won't answer your questions, Misha. That's all. She will do it. She go, Ugh. And I'll go, no, just say I, and my mom won't play the game. She's just, so they're stubborn like that. It's a Bodnar thing. They are stubborn to the end. And they will see right in these texts because they're not reading it anymore. Lesia would be flying away. She would have gone from the texts to an email, wrote in the text, you just wait. Why aren't you answering your email? And she'll, she'll be wanting me to open this other email because she could do it on her typewriter or whatever the deal. She could do it in this way so she's gonna just troll me and they don't even know what troll is and i'll be like look up troll and they go no like a cop I, i'm not gonna do it you can't tell me first amendment auditor it's not you asking the questions but it is if you look it up people first amendment auditor they ask the questions that means you're supposed to stay silent if you're getting audited but you know audited could have been a tax audit you would have shut up it could have been a mafia audit, right? That's what they do in Marseille. That's what I bring up those mafia guys. They, they would come to our shows, this Venus bitch. Yeah, that the Santa Barbara Independent, some millennial has a photo, black and white, that was done in a um, Obanya. That means prison. Yes, in, in, in France. Yeah, it was done in a prison. No, it was done in a prison-like apartment complex like I'm in, in a condo that's paid for by the county. So the bathroom is in the middle, right, of this office space. Let's just say that in the middle of the night, you meet people and you can always go, hey, you go ahead. It's going to really smell what we're doing here. Yeah, when we go in, we're going to be using this fixer, developer. We got to do this stuff to develop this this picture that I'm going to be sending years later to a millennial in 1999 and then you guys lose it when when did you lose it I want to know I'm going to tell you you probably lost it uh, in 2006 when you thought that Bela Lugosi was no longer relevant yeah and we had to beg J Joseph poor Joseph Woodard from like long distance please write something about Roma or the other place now it's Espresso Roma like any place around town where we're still trying to have music do you remember the old days of the coach house what happened oh Woodard do you remember did you see Phantomus do you know who's in Phantomus the guy from the Melvins do you know Joe Woodard that American Spy Fox YouTube thinks that the Melvins are trash? Yeah, he's, well, he's just because he's making money on it. He's making money with the same people who are dissing Johnny Depp and who have been schooled by the French that the dude was not like what you guys said, but you guys aren't going to apologize, are you? You made too much money. I'm going to end this with Nina. You should have just listened and looked up Lee McMo McMillan. Lee McMillan. I'm going to write L-E-E MC, like Mick, like McDonald's, like the places I've been auditing with the dirt water. You can't hear that. Yeah. McMillan would have been pissed at you. Nina. M-I-L-L-A-N. And I would always go, why? Why, Nina? Why? You will see it on my texts. Don't you understand? I can't delete this. I, I don't think I can delete mine. Do you know how to delete your texts? Please just leave the good ones up. And instead, she made them shorter more vicious she won't see it in the end i'm going please she's like do you know that since you've talked to me a week ago my life's in, my life's in shambles mama's like sick and hysterical now yeah i've sent them all to the loony bin they haven't even listened to the tape yet none of them can you imagine i did two thousand videos and tapes for that family to understand me in these past two years i did an experiment with doctors and, I, and, and the audit part was with lawyers. So everything was covered. It's all Green Party, right? It's something they don't understand. It's Native American how I'm getting my health care. I don't need to pay for it. It's the Green Party. I do need to smoke pot. Get over it, everybody.
it helps so many people. And just because my family doesn't know that the Syrian Tony, hey Tony, yeah, who cashed my check when Chase wouldn't do it? Who cashed many checks of you guys when my own Chase bank wouldn't do it? Yeah, Nina, after they tell me that you're giving me all your money when you died and I had to be like, whoa, that's illegal, I believe that you told me that, but I don't like the guilt feeling. And then you and mama just throw guilt like that. I gotta go get my high blood pressure pill. You don't care about mine. You don't care that you, Nina, triggered me in this whole thing. You lost me subscribers. I'm still talking about you right now. And you don't even know how to do what I do. And you don't know how hard 20 days, dude, that's like being sober the 20 days when we still think about it. No, dude, it's hard. Do it first before you say that I'm spinning in my head because that's what I did. That's what you told me before the COVID. That's the last thing you told me in Stella Marie's, Nina. And I'm going to give this advice out to people um, for people who give out advice and that they don't keep their own advice. They forgot it during the COVID. The last thing you said to me was, don't say that we're triggering you, Misha. Do like me. I have learned to trick my mind. It's your mind getting triggered and you can fool your mind into being triggered and that was the one nugget after years of doing these reunions family reunions at the Stella Marie's that you guys would be counting at the end always the, the tip when I would just say just put 10 bucks more than what you were planning do the opposite of what you were planning which was to maybe take ten dollars in but no, you're there with magnifying glasses and everything. And you're looking at me going, you're good at math. And I'm just laughing. You don't know me, do you? I guess at the thing. It's just nice. I just have to be human. I don't have to look at the percentage. You just move the decimal point. You can do it in 10 and then, you know what I mean? Do 10%. It's easy to figure out what 10% is, people. And then just double it. Yeah, you're giving them 20%. You're being nice. But you can just look at the person, look at the meal, remember how the whole story went, how much that you turned something back that I was going, you know, Anthony Bourdain would explain to you that you're going to send that server to their death. I kept telling them when they would, when they would salt something without tasting it and then tell it, send it back, tell them it's not salty enough. Yeah. And they wouldn't let me tell the story once again because I'm spinning in my own head. That's what they were telling me. So this one sister says, today, well, it's just you spinning in your own head. Uh-huh. Yeah, you haven't heard the tape. It's just that. It's, yeah, if that's spinning, you should listen because if there are triggers that I'm doing there, I'm going to be putting them out public. So if there's other people like you, Nina, if you are the 1%, like I'm the 1%, just for the, the, the sake of the other people. Just like mama, I said, just for the sake of the other people going to Costco to get their drugs, do not at a table in public in front of everyone go, well, I know that the Costco drugs are placebos. You must hear that stuff. Nina, I'm going to repeat everything you guys said at a table. If you think it sounds weird that I'm spinning in my head, yeah, because you never let me finish any of those stories. That's why all the videos, I never finish a story. It's because you guys in my head are now stopping it. So I must be able to contact you guys who were the only people in the room and say, this is how I saw it. Is it okay that this is how I feel? I feel. Now you could say, oh, it's making me feel this way. But at least when you hear it, you will not be able to say in front of a judge, no, like what you do, what you do in Texas, I tell you, answer that thing. Why did you lie with your first text to me? Answer that question about the fire zone. It starts there. You triggered me first. Nina, you called me first. You spoke for 10 minutes about Lesia. I couldn't get a word in edgewise. It's all on tape. My doctor listened. He's like, wow, she's bulldozing you. And I said, that's what they do. But not only that, he's like, you told her don't talk about fighting between you and Lesia until Lesia apologizes to my mom for messing up her like 60th birthday by doing a trolling 
text that turned into a massive email that Nina turned it back into a text to tell me that it happened right before we're playing for the thing. She triggered me. Lesia from long distance triggered me. She needs to apologize to my mom. I'm triggered that they all hurt my mom. They cannot turn against me. I am the mascot of the Music and Arts Conservatory. For since she made it, she made it for me, Nina. That's cool. You cannot come toward me and squish me in any way. You right now, your mascot is a Rottweiler that scares the shit out of me. I haven't even seen it yet. If you listen to the tapes, I tell the story of one of them that got me like all through my... I do not trust that breed. I, that breed tried to attack my daughter, Strad. Remember, just for the R.I.P. of Strad, you don't know that dog well enough. I do. It, it, you, you, you can't listen to any of this. You never will. Until I'm dead. You understand? That's what I told Mama. You know, after I'm dead, you guys are probably going to listen a week afterwards because the police are going to try to figure out who started this, who pushed the first trigger, and they'll know it's the upstairs neighbors. And they'll see right away that the upstairs neighbors aren't, are making too much money to be in there. And they'll know that Itzik was, was closing his eyes to it because his brother-in-law had already told him. For some reason, the whole family decided he was the culprit. And then the whole incident with the police, they are going to try to explain, I suppose. If Dudley gets involved, they would have to explain what they filmed where is the film of this Bodnar saying what he said and they're they're not gonna find it so it'll either be tampering or if they if they do get the thing I'm hoping that they kept it on their phone if they do keep it they're duped because it'll have that question that nobody can answer that was the important question what is the name of my daughter for the whole two years. Be it that she wasn't there or she was there, she's dead. It's She's a true thing. You guys know it. The family knows. And that dude upstairs and his wife who said, it's not that bad. They already heard how noisy it is downstairs. Nina, tell Itzik, there's no way. They don't need me to clean downstairs for them to put that floor back to code they must put it back to code or i will be pointing out that itzik let them stay there for the past six years yeah hoa is going down i'm either going to twist it all in my head like they say i shouldn't be doing but they're pushing me into it because i asked them please don't tell me what to do and they said you're spinning let us help you let me tell you how to help yourself no nina you must listen to the recording you must find the strength you must find the triggers you must call me back be able to repeat it if not verbatim like i can do to you for your calls what you say to me but at least that you got the gist because what you're talking about is not the gist you're just going on in your way. So this goes to anyone. If you've ever dealt with a family member where you're like, whoa, I think we will become estranged. Like, if you came to the ripping of the shirts, for, your, for those of you who don't know about the ripping of the shirts, there's a, a passage in this Neil Diamond old the jazz singer it's a movie i saw with my sisters and my mom when we were escaping my abusive alcoholic dad just some sort of vacation right in this pacer like car called a citation it looks just the same no seat belts right we were in the back we made a tent it was my my most favorite moment nina slept the whole trip that's called depression people that's called bipolar and there might have been other issues she doesn't want me to talk about it um, the other sister just did all the talking, right? And told me about what Phil Collins, like, didn't save someone from drowning. And I was explaining, no, 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 that's not what he's saying. It was a metaphor for this. She's like, oh, God, shut up. Then she brought up her favorite um, Steve. Oh, uh, Where do the children play? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah who is that? Uh, Steve, you know. Uh, well, you crack 
the sky scrapers fill the air but you you keep on building higher till there's no more room up there oh man he was so dramatic and you make him tough and he's all playing a acoustic guitar he later said oh my god i uh, he went to god and said i will never play that music again don't worry he came back after the covid he's decided no the music was okay it's just nobody's gonna listen to it right so you make them tough and you make them strong uh and and they just keep going on and on till there's no more room right till there's no more room up there and then um you know we've come a long way we're changing day to day but tell me where do the children play yeah where did the children play well they didn't know the name right they did send me to jail that very day that they were filming me these neighbors that tore up the floor it's not it's a code violation i already um pointed it out to a builder who is for the hoa it's it if you could find out who was building on that fateful day in that hoa they said that if the only way that the top floor could be out of code violation and they'd already done the job and I'd already spoken to the workers and the workers were Home Depot and he said the only way right that they would be out if he'd done the flooring like I had done the flooring see I'd already done what they've done Nina that's another thing you come at me like ah uh, why would I need to clean my floor when they're the ones who messed up the floor no they if they want me to clean up my place so I can sell it so I don't have to lie to the person and like show it to him when the upstairs neighbors aren't in the house cuz it's unlivable it starts there i'm not suing for them making it unlivable that they sent off this ptsd i'm just saying it stops here that you guys talk to me and whatever it's like you could do it just at the next meeting say that it has to go back up to code we'll go we'll look you can see just by looking you can peel one up you'll have to peel one of them up of the planks they can do it they can put it right back but they're going to have to pull them all up and you're going to see that it's directly like on some sort of piece of paper not even pad and i tried to tell them that and um they were like nah and i tried to tell them in inches i guess a friend told me the guy told me in centimeters but it's the same thing it's going to be pushed down he wasn't making sense he was showing there's no way that the foam should be this thick and i'm like you never put the floor in it gets pushed down oh my god but they just kept talking like that like you guys do all of you you have no facts i say man why did you just say because you called me a week ago now your life's in shambles i haven't even done anything i haven't been at your house you're the one who has a dog on a treadmill hello and it's like that breed whoa you got you should worry about that you should worry about why aren't you walking around um Stevens Park like me picking up these bags that say for you and your doggy use the poop bags and then they just leave it there for me because there's nobody there at Stevens Park to to do that I mean you have to call them to I mean a Karen or a, Ma- a Nancy they'll just um call them if you're smoking or something bothering them as they're doing an illegal barbecue that's how it worked there true story ask Kevin Hart that shit happens in Santa Barbara ask Ofra ask Rob Lowe for sure ask him at the next meeting he'll tell you uh, ask him about the Atkins diet he's looking good and yeah he's sober and if you see him on the shows he's acting good so yeah did i say something wrong jenny mccarthy is around maybe she's here i'm forgetting people no christopher lloyd he's going to be you know since he took a couple cello lessons with me He said, "Use me in your act, but you know, just don't give out the phone number." And so I haven't, I don't think. If I accidentally did, people, please edit it out. One of my editors. We are editing out all the family entertainment that I did there this week. I guess we're edit we weeded out the ones who did not care about my family. They unsubscribed right away or maybe it was in a protest that they think my family and the grocery outlet need to be polite like they've been asking. 
with their thoughts and wash their thoughts like we've been asking. All right. That's all this is going to be. I think I did some singing. All right. Oh, no. We're not going to leave Lessia. Come on. Lessa. I'm talking about the Lessa days. All right. I know this is going to sound harsh. Yeah. Nina. Nina's on. Oh, hello. I want to tell you guys that once you heard this, now you can edit out whatever you don't like. You can't touch the other person's edits, though. So it's going to be fun. You and Nina just saying no way if you take out that part then i'm taking out the part where right because it's always going to be like one of you looks good and the other one does not even if it's the same story even if you both lived it and then i want you to think about where was our brother when we were doing that fight and you're gonna see oh he was under the piano yeah do you know how bad for ansd that mama, even though she says, oh, I wasn't a good mother. Let me apologize one more time. Yeah, but she had to work. Like my sister said, Nina, to end. She's like, you know, I'm not mad at you. You know, it's all good, but I have to have my life. Right? Wink, wink. You know what I mean? After me telling her, please don't say that. When, when Jill said, have a nice life, I never spoke to him again. Wink, wink. Have a nice day. That's what I said. It was like a big deal for me. This friend. I lost my best friend. He used to be part of the family. He, now he's like the ex-brother-in-law. I didn't. I don't even know how to say that. We have nothing for that. In American. But in France, it's just the family. He will stay in the family. If I go Breaking Bad, he'll still be there. He might get mad. He might get surprised that I fooled him all about it. But he knows I didn't want to have him killed. But he said, have a nice life in a way that I knew. Well, that's just professional. He's just saying goodbye to a relationship, saying, you know whose fault it is. He did blame it on someone else. I've heard this one with my friends, even when they didn't even know. My family. My family would show up at a an outing, an inning, an outing. And just stay in a corner, be very uncomfortable. Then ask me, why didn't you invite us? I'd have to be, because you're going to be in a corner, uncomfortable. And that's what they were. Then they were saying, you're not coming over here making us feel more comfortable. And I'm like, I don't want to. I want you to go there. Since you're here now, go invest. Do something in this party to with other people that you don't know. You know, go out of your comfort zone like you did for Ken. I'm sorry, I made something personal there. But I have to point this out. If they made the effort for someone else, why won't they make it for me? Just because we're not that kind of relationship. You see what I mean? I'm doing this for the people who may have been dumped, who heard any kind of dumping. Doesn't matter what gender studies, those of you taking my gender studies, that I'm the only one in Santa Barbara at the Music and Arts Conservatory who has someone else's PhD, right? Tagged to my name. I'm so sorry, Perry Longlow. But you have, of course, Poet Laureate attached to your name. Somehow the county, they have you just Laureate. They forgot your PhD and they tagged it to my name. And so sometimes people think I lie about having a PhD and I have to explain, no. I wrote Dr. Lord Gryden. BS, right? I can have my BS. They're like laughing. Yeah, yeah, that's funny. No, and I'm like bachelors of science. You haven't heard of it. I'm a scientist from the WTF is happening here experience. Do you feel that fan? Can you hear it? If you can't hear the fan, then that means Anthony Kiedis's sock is working excellent as a windscreen and we will be putting out different models of this merchandising he said it's okay as long as i don't mention or like he said i like a terrorist like i've done with everyone i said ah i will compromise so i'm going to compromise by making this the last time that i tell the story that is in his book i don't understand you didn't edit it out of your book it actually happened and you're going to say somewhere yeah it happened but you just don't want me saying it because somehow you think it's going to direct them to reading the book 
And in which case, they're not going to finish the book, right? Like all my friends going, oh my God, I couldn't finish it. And he's like, why? He's like, well, I mean, the content's interesting, of course, but it's, it's Anthony. That's all they say, man, Anthony, about you, just so you know, in Santa Barbara, home of the newlyweds and the newly deads. Nearly weds. Yeah. Nearly weds and newly deads. Yeah, it works. All right. We changed it. So Ashley Brilliant. All right. You can keep your thing. I'm, you stop negotiating with me that I stole your phrase. It's true. I did steal it from you back in, uh, where did I hear it first? I want to say Don Pardo's, Don Pasquale's. It was something down by the beach that is not there anymore. But there was this cool blues band that would always play on Wednesday nights. And the bass player, who was amazing, actually was dating at that time during the uh, Simpsons uh, situation. O.J. Simpson at uh, in the L.A. Coliseum, right? That whole thing. Um, Everyone thought that this uh, Barbara Marsh, Barbara Hirsch, Barbara, no, Barbara Hirsch is a, she's a well-known analog recording genius guru in town. I'm not going to touch that name. How are you doing? I miss you. You were very cool to me when I was a kid and all interested in recording. And you guys, and you had a really cool girlfriend and you guys were hip. I'm telling you, you guys were hip in this town at that time, if you know what I mean. You guys know what I mean. You're, I love you guys. I just freaked out my sister, she's gone. Okay, my sisters have both gone. They think I'm speaking in code or I'm insane. I was just talking personally to some friends, I believe. We'll be friends forever, for one reason or another. All right, why did I do that? I said that because I want to say hello to Deborah, Deborah, Deborah McCollum, miss you. And your students miss you. You were awesome. And I want to thank you for um, supporting some Bella Lugosi antics when you played with this once and I did whatever and you didn't want to play it that way, but you did it. You were a good sport and I get it and, and you were amazing. You had it all together in that, in that student teaching department, something I could never do. And when you first had your first bout of, of cancer, I think you even spoke with, um, you, you took, you took Laura Hackstein's advice, her crazy, just off the wall advice. And it was awesome. And then you, you got the best wig. Instead of getting pissed off that you're gonna have a wig, you got the wig. It was like, what, Marilyn, Marilyn Manson? No, Marilyn Monroe. It was awesome. Yeah, you looked great. Um, and I'm very sorry. I think the last time I saw you, you must have been very sick. I wasn't understanding that you were just working just to work. You weren't like, I thought, oh, she must be feeling better that she's teaching. And uh, I believe I, I went, I might have given you a, um, a hug that was a little too hard. And I felt um, I may have um, said something that, not that it was inappropriate, but it was just, you know, my fun way of what I think, how a lesson should go. And I, I realized, oh my God, I'm, I'm, She's, she's dying and I'm messing with her teaching technique method to the end. Can I just let her have it? And so she gave me a very weak smile. I could tell she was very sick. I, I, it's amazing she did those last lessons. Whoever you were, students, if you had those moments, remember you are super blessed. And she would want you to, even if you don't make it a career or whatever, just occasionally take it out whatever that instrument was. It's the viola, but it, you can make it work for the violin, the viola and cello, they're very close together. They're, str they're strung the same. And just a musician, just wanting to be the best musician at whatever genre you're doing, if you want to insist on doing one genre. All right, that was, uh, 
that was, we did this on June 2nd. I don't know how, I'm not doing anyone's eulogies on any dates. I'm just going to keep everyone alive when they show up in my mind. And that was Barbara Hirsch who brought up, I saw her when we, I think she was, yeah, I know for sure. When we played at Deborah's um, funeral, there was, um, oh boy, um, I'm not going to mention them. I, I can't go there right now. I, I won't be able to finish this one. So let's let's just come back to that some other time. But yeah, these are wonderful people. Wonderful musicians are out there always contacting us in little ways. Um, she told me I don't have to get Kitty a litter box. Just let Kitty go anywhere around the house. And it seems to be working. I can't find where she's going. So I only have to worry about guinea pig. And that's enough for like three cats. Oh my God, the guinea pig. Mm. who started to be really happy lately letting me pet it a lot more something's in the air maybe it's summer maybe we gotta get out of here but I gotta make sure that they fix those floors first that really I think that's another thing that set me off is that nobody wants me to get justice about these floors and just have them put back the way they were before they want me to do some cleaning so that the people can come in and hear the sounds. No, they can just see it from up above. They'll, oh my God, why do I need to get more and more involved? You already sent the cops in. The cops know what it looks like. The fire department, if they do, I mean, they're gonna say, so you're making a movie. I don't see anything that burns here. I mean, but even if they did, they're gonna just give me a, um, a fine and I'll fix it. But all I'm saying is I'll fix what's down there. Whatever you guys want me to fix down there. The floors upstairs must go back to how they were before those neighbors moved in. It's a real easy thing. They did the job. They tore up the floor. They not, they must remember. If they can't remember, it's it. You're on the HOA. Someone will remind them how that job's supposed to be done. They'll have to do it through you. Just have an HOA person put it back up to specs if you guys don't have an hoa person who specifically does those things i'm going to start getting you in trouble it's a, the hoa i'm going to come to the meetings i'm going to bring up stuff when you guys were like trying to call my job and 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 get money because i didn't pay last year a mistake that you guys did over one payment that's the hoa you could say i wasn't there yeah but you're there now and you're about to leave there now you, you, you've got to take your last time in there to help your... your you, I was there first. Before you. I got you... I got you voted in, Itzik. If you didn't notice that at one point... All I'm saying, when you look up when I got thrown in jail and then what was the next time that you guys got voted in... If you suddenly had more votes than you ever thought, it was all the neighbors here doing it for me, hoping that you would get those neighbors. You haven't done it. Last time I saw you, you asked me to put a mask on to get in the car with you. Is that okay? When I was wearing the mask. People aren't looking at me. They're not listening to me. They're not getting any signs. That's the important thing. It was the signs. It was my body. Did you see how crumpled in I was? It's in the car. And you said... Your sister loves you. Lesia loves you. And I'm like, why is everyone saying these things? I got your back. You know they love you. You know they want what's best for you. You're not hearing them. They're misunderstood. You should be on your meds. I mean, that thing will just keep going on and on. And they say, you're spinning. But all this spinning, I didn't have it. The, the video before my sister Nina called me that faithful day that I wasn't accepting their calls for two years and I did it I made that mistake and now I'm paying for it and they won't apologize and they're turning it all toward me and they're trying to guilt me oh and it's me spinning and then they go well we have a life wink wink yeah f you you're never going to hear this recording until I'm dead and I'll sleep when I'm dead Stop telling me that I should go somewhere for this PTSD so I can get some sleep. Just like Warren Zevon said, I'll sleep when I'm dead. Do you know that Warren Zevon studied with Stravinsky, Nina? 
he went to his house. So he, he tracked him down in L.A., this 13-year-old. Would you have let me go to Stravinsky's house? I bet you would. I don't know who that Gabor... I'm ending the thing, Nina. You wrote Gabor something. And you asked, do I know who it is? And I'm not going to check it. Just like you don't listen, I'm not going to look it up. But I remember what it is. It'll be in my head forever. I don't know what it is. No, I don't know. I ain't going to look it up. Do you know what a First Amendment audit is? You answered yes. That's right, you did answer yes. No, you, you should have been silent. We asked the questions. You're not going to do it, right? You told me. You cannot do this. You must not act this way. But I'm going to. It's up to you to change your move. My moves are not going to change just because you told me not to do it and just because you tell me afterwards throw some guilt. If you tell me that it's factual guilt, wonderful. I still asked you factually, don't guilt trip me. Do not family guilt trip me with your Bodnar thing. Please. All right? And I'm not mad. I'm not yelling. I'm dead. I was the martyr, mama. Did you see? I know. You kept saying, don't talk like that. Yeah, you said, shh, don't talk about it. And that was the experiment. I said, no, 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 we have to talk about this stuff now. Bipolar. Um, instead of talking about erectile dysfunction that you, you know nothing about, you can't talk about that with me. But you could talk about my eating disorder. You could talk about me going from skinny to fat to skinny to fat. You'll remember those things. If those are triggers to you, wow, you can't help me, but I don't understand what programs you were in, any of you, or who are your doctors. And that's the last thing, you know, that's my thing to you. If you don't let your doctor listen to that tape, it's an hour and 30 minutes, it explains everything. If you don't allow him to listen to it and tell me what your triggers are, we're done. You are no longer taking part of the WTF experiment. And that means you ruined it for everyone. And this last week has been awful. And you went off to your life. Yeah, have a nice life. But me, how are you going to get me 19 subscribers? Do you know how hard it was to get those subscribers? Could you do what I was doing? No, you couldn't even listen to it. But you made an excuse saying you're not making an excuse. You're saying I'm a terrorist. I'm not being compromising. And one after another, I said, just answer the question. Why did you lie? And you wouldn't, like mama. And I said, just answer the question. I'll do whatever you want if you just answer the question. No, I'm not going to answer your question. You're making me answer a question. You can't demand someone. So I wrote, no, I'm begging. I put all these things with, please, it's God begging you, begging you, please, please, please. No. So, if mama doesn't do it, you don't do it. I know Alessa won't do it. You're not going to apologize. And that, that's unlivable for me. At least in the game, right? The game you didn't want to play, Nina, right? But you told me, you can fool your mind into it. And you're not even doing that anymore, are you? You just fooled your mind that everyone is going to trigger you. Yeah. Everyone must not trigger you. You're not being selfish. Everyone else is being selfish because they just don't want to, you know, not trigger you by just not doing that because you can't stand that. You can't take that. You don't want that. But you want to help. Welcome to the citizens of United States of America. All right, time for some martial law, I believe. Martial law and the Green Party. We're going to come save Santa Barbara. Everyone. Santa Barbara Independent. Look out. The News and Review is back in town. Let's see how you fight us.